number 14 on my hit list of project management instruments. It's the risk register. The risk register builds on top of what the risk management plan began to build. The risk management plan gives us guidance on how risk management activities will be carried out on the project. But beyond that, we have a risk register which begins to log the risks. At the primitive stage, we could have risks listed out in a risk register. But becoming more advanced, we should follow the cause risk effect method espoused by the PMI. It's not enough to identify a risk, but we need to identify the cause and the effect. Risk, risk of falling. What is the cause of that risk? Someone left a banana skin on the floor. Someone had just mopped the floor and it was wet causing the individual to slip. That's the cause. The cause is the banana skin or the wet floor. The risk is the person falling and the effect, we could look at several effects. We could look at bodily effects such as broken bones, aches and pains. We could also look at a monetary effect such as an organization that did a poor health and safety job having to compensate an employee for injuries, if you will. So when we take a look at the risk register, it's important that you look at the cause, the risk, and the effect. I would highly recommend that at a minimum. I know in some other firms, they may not espouse the model of cause, risk, effect. They may just jump straight to risk. But notice, jumping straight to risk does not show you the true impact of the risk. So it falls short of perfection in risk management, in my opinion. So if that is an organization you're affiliated with, I would advise you as a project manager to introduce them to the cause risk effect approach. Now beyond the cause risk effect, the risk register begins to evolve even more. Beyond that, we get into using the risk register all throughout the risk management knowledge area. So we have the cause risk effect and identify risk, but then we build on that we subtly build on it, even right there in identify risks. When someone throws out a potential response, you want to capture that potential response. Potential responses should be captured and then revisited. So your risk register can begin to capture these early responses before going fully into the responses. Now, outside of identify risks as a process, getting into the analysis of the risks, we still use our risk register. And that's why in qualitative risk analysis or perform qualitative risk analysis, as the PMI calls it in the PMBOK guide, we begin to address probability and impact. The probability rating on a scale, the impact rating on a scale. It could be a one to five or one to 10, a one to a hundred, or it could be a scale broken out into quarters. However you view the scale, most important thing is you should have definitions of impact scales already defined. I talk about this in the last video. Watch that video if you've not already watched it. But you want to define what a one, two, three, four, five is on your scale, and then the risks can be effectively ranked, rated, scored, if you will. Ultimately, you get to the point where you analyze the risk from a qualitative perspective in the risk register, still in the risk register. So you can see the risk register is used all throughout risk management. It's used for cause risk effect. It's used to score the risk in qualitative risk analysis. It's used to quantify the risks and perform quantitative risk analysis because the information still resides in the risk register. It is also used to craft potential responses to the risks. So you could have a field for the response and the category of the response. Which of the five positive strategies or which of the five negative strategies does it fall into? Strategies for positive risks or opportunities, strategies for negative risk or threats, and overall project risk responses to those overall project risks. You need to be thinking about your risk register as a document that lives throughout 
risk from the moment you identify risk all the way to the end. You never stop using it all the way to the end of the project when you close out the risks. Now, after you've quantified the risks and you've formed those responses, you also use the register to track the responses that you've implemented and the outcome. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into risk management and the risk register is the hub where a lot of this stuff happens. The risk register is also very useful in helping you develop a risk report of what exactly is happening on the project from a risk perspective at a high level to present that to stakeholders and executives. Let's take a look in a PMBOK guide before we round up and see what exactly is in the risk register. Let's take a look at page 409 really quick. 409, identify risk is the process of identifying individual project risks as well as sources of overall project risk and documenting their characteristics. The key benefit of this process is the documentation of existing individual project risks and sources of overall project risks. It also brings together information so the project team can respond appropriately to identified risks. Now follow me to the output of this process, the risk register. This is on page 417. It states, the risk register captures details of identified individual project risks. The results of perform qualitative risk analysis, plan risk responses, implement risk responses, and monitor risks are recorded in the risk register as those processes are conducted throughout the project. The risk register may contain limited or extensive risk information. And this is exactly what I was saying. From the moment you capture the initial cause risk effect, this document lives all the way to close out. On completion of identifying risks, the risk register could include a list of identified risks, potential risk owners, list of potential risk responses. And that's the point I stressed earlier. Potential risk responses should be captured. So if someone says, I know exactly what to do with that risk. Don't shut them up, glean the information, document it, and revisit it when you get to the actual process where you're planning risk responses. There is so much stuff in here. I wish I could go on for another 10 minutes, but it's about that time we need to close for today. Remember, if you're looking to get PMP certified, you're looking to get more knowledge about project management, visit praiseon.com, send us an email, let us know how we can help you or your team to better understand risk management or better understand project management. Remember, the PMI has a certification dedicated to risk. It's called the Risk Management Professional Certification. Right now, there are about 5,000 credential holders. And if that's an area that you found yourself to be focused on over the past number of months or years, it's probably something you want to begin to think of. Because if you do this for a long period of time, like in the years, this may be another feather to your cap. Just like I made the decision to take the RMP exam because I'd been involved in risk management across so many jobs, I decided to make it official. You may want to consider that. Go to pmi.org and check out the risk management professional certification. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. See you tomorrow.